So this is a conversation I've been wanting to have for a bit. Ever since the un- introduction of these new gloves at UFC 302, we have seen an almost unprecedented amount, lack therefore thereof, KOs lately. We've seen a lack thereof KO, of KOs here. There has barely been any KOs and all the tip, you know, KOs, TKOs, out of all of them, let's just break down the KOs that we've had. We had Tatsu retire get an injury TKO. That doesn't fucking count. Uh, that does not count towards the gloves in any means. Uh, that doesn't help the gloves case. We had Jared Kennedy versus Amarov in an absolutely horrendous early stoppage. That doesn't count. We did have Dominic Reyes. It does that. You know, it does seem like he did get a TKO there with the gloves. He did land a knee, which was a part of it. But you know, fair play, he got a TKO there. Bruno Fajaya, his was with an elbow. Zachary Reese, you know, he knocked him out of the hands. That's the only proper knockout knockout we've seen with the introduction of these gloves. Uh, Zachary Reese knocking Julian Marquez the fuck out. And like, the, the way I look at this is, is it the gloves? Do we have enough to go off to say that the gloves are shit? These gloves are meant to be smaller. You know, the typical gloves are four ounces. These are meant to be three ounces, I believe. Can we blame the gloves for all of this? Is the gloves the reason for the lowering of the KO rate? Or are these fights just... Were they ever going to get... Were we ever going to see knockouts slash TKOs in them? Let's start off the first fight with these gloves, which was which was Mitch Rapazzo versus Andre Lima. I think that fight was always going to go to a decision. Lima was kicking him up. He wasn't really going for anything with the hands anyway. Perez versus... Jocelyn Edwards. Perez actually did get a knockdown, so fair play to her, but women's MMA, most times out of 10, it's either going to be a submission or a decision. Mickey Gall versus Basil Hafez. I mean, I think that one was always probably going to be a decision when you look at her at the same time. Both grapplers, they're going to neutralize the grappling. Neither have like crazy heavy hands there. Uh, Philip Rowe versus Jake Matthews, that was always going to go to a decision, in my opinion. Grant Dawson versus Joe Selecki, that has nothing to do with the gloves. Uh, Almeida versus Romanov. That was always going to be a decision. That was always going to be a submission win for Rom, for Almeida or a decision. It was going to be very unlikely either man got a KO there. Uh, Almeida versus Kopilov. That is a fight where I could have maybe seen a KO, but at the same time, Caesar Almeida does have a crazy chin, and Kopilov has only been finished with submission. So you can't really blame the gloves for a lot of these men. Looking at it this way, like. Is it really the gloves or is it maybe just the fights? Randy Brown versus Alessio de Santos. I don't think that was typically going to be a KO either with the old gloves. Nico Price versus Alex Morono. Uh, I mean, we did see this fight with the old gloves years and years ago, but that was a prime Nico Price. Nico Price is washed, but he did. Beat the shit out of Alex Moreno, but he didn't get a KO. Uh, Ola Chechik versus Holland. Michelle did land a knockdown that wasn't counted for God knows why. Uh, but again, that fight was probably... fight was probably never going to be a knockout unless it was Holland knocking him out. But I did pick Holland by decision there. Strickland versus Costa as well. Like, you look at it this way, man. Like, these fights, the more I'm reading them, it's reading them out, it's like, these fights were never going to be TKOs, KOs. Holland was always... I mean, Strickland was always going to win a decision. Makachev, he got a submission. I think we all expected that. Like, then you go to, like, next week's card. Like, Tamor versus Dos Santos, obviously. Same, Stamen versus Lapius, obviously. Mora versus Gomez, obviously. Marcos versus Castaneda, obviously. Like, Lee versus De La Rosa. Gatona versus Butler. Prates did get a KO, but he didn't use the hands. He got a knee. But still. Uh, Ludovic Klein beat the shit out of Moises. He dropped him a bunch of times. You can't say that that's the, the glove's fault. That he didn't get a KO there. You can definitely, you know, like, Chop that up to just maybe his fight IQ wasn't there for that fight. Uh, sorry, Honor just laid on top of Baza beating the fuck out of him on the ground, so there's probably no chance of a stop. It just probably should have been stopped to be fair, but nothing concussive on the feet is what I'm getting at. 
Uh, obviously, Zachary Reese might just be the most fucking powerful fighter in the UFC to get KOs with these gloves. And then, like, Fahaya, yeah, gets a KO. Barrosas, that was always going to be a submission or a decision. Uh, Reyes, we already mentioned that. Kananir versus Amarov. Like, the more I look at this man, I don't think it, I don't think the gloves are to blame, honestly. I think there's the UFC is booking some real shitters lately. Knudsen, always going to be a decision. That fight was always going to go to a decision. Costa versus Shalian was either going to be a decision or, or a decision or a submission. So I'm trying to like fucking. I was going to say his name. It was like, no, I'm not going to Shalian, Nudan, Beke. I'm so bad at pronouncing it. Uh, Jekka Saragi versus Weston Wilson. That was a shocker. That fucking shocked me. I thought Weston Wilson was going to get knocked out, not going to lie. But like, Judas versus Hernandez, obviously decision. I did think Nate Manesk should have knocked out Jimmy Flick, but he didn't. But that was because he did sort of look horrible in that fight. Quinlan versus Fuja. Quinlan, since losing, has just fallen off. He's lost all finishing instinct. Al Mabaya versus Jose Johnson were both not very great strikers. High stand did almost get knocked out in that fight, so Garrett Armfield might be the hardest punching bantamweight if this if this is true about the gloves. Uh, Lucas Almeida beat the shit out of Quayamba, dropped him a bunch of times, got knockdowns. Silver Day and Raj and Miles Johns just had a low output fucking tip, uh, tip tack fight like fucking pitter patter, uh, and Alex Perez got injured so. I actually honestly don't believe in this whole fucking glove sit scenario where it, the gloves are ruining everything. It is cool to say, it is cool to have that superstition behind it, but honestly, I just think it's the matchups the UFC have put on. None of these fights were ever going to be fucking KOs. You know, I don't think that fucking different difference is going to fucking matter at all, man. Uh, I don't think it means jack shit, man. Uh, but still. You know, we'll find out this weekend. I'll look at some fights and I'll tell you there has to be a fucking KO in those fights. If there is no KO on Pavlovich versus Volkov, get rid of the fucking gloves. Just do it. Get rid of the fucking gloves, man. Uh, and Hack Paras versus Gordon as well, probably. But honestly, don't see many fights that are guaranteed KOs. Maybe Volkan Ustamir versus Walker, but that could also be a boring point fight by Walker. So it's hard to know. But, yeah, if per Pavlovich versus Volkov ends in the decision, get rid of the fucking gloves. But I don't, I think people are overreacting with this. It is funny to say, but I don't think it's too bad. But anyway, let me know your hypothesis and thoughts on this in the comment section below. Like the thing, uh, like the video, subscribe. You guys know the drill. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace. Cheers.